Welcome everybody to Rock Talk's homework album reviews. That is where we give each other an album to listen to and go back a week later and we talk about it. So this week I was given Camelot Silverthorn and I gave Danton the Ronnie James Dio final recording with Black Sabbath, but not Black Sabbath. The band's called Heaven and Hell. The album's called Devil You Know. So you want you take it away? Tell me what you think about this. We're just jumping off of our other podcast where we did talk about Black Sabbath with Dio, the Dio years. But we didn't really talk about this album too much because we want to save it, and not repeat ourselves for the album review. So this is the first yeah. time you heard this album? Yes. Tell and, me about it. And it was the first time you heard Silverthorne, right? Yes. Yeah. So so this is kind of an interesting week for the both of us because it was we kind of both self-imposed our homework for the other on ourselves so like i assigned silverthorn to jeff because i was somewhat familiar with that album because i listened to it a long time ago so i assigned it to jeff and then also to myself like i should listen re-listen to it and revisit it and see what it's like and jeff pretty much did the same thing with devil you know for me and then he himself listened to it and it was funny because we were both you know going back and forth and naturally geeking out over over the whole thing um i was absolutely floored um i did so the way i listened to it i did the i did the opening track a couple days ago adam and evil and it was it was exactly what i could have expected from this lineup of you know pretty much sabbath with dio but just not under the name as you said uh it was just you know like like a like a sledgehammer to the face it's just like oh man i loved it i loved it i was like I, and it set the bar really really high and i'm like i really have high expectations for this if it's pretty much if this whole thing is going to be stylistically a tribute to Sabbath during the Dio years in the early 80s, then I'm in for a treat because I absolutely love Black Sabbath with Dio as their front man. It's probably my favorite time period of Sabbath. It's definitely the Sabbath stuff with which I'm most familiar. So so I jumped in and, and, and I started just this morning with um, with fear and went through like each track cover to cover um, and there was not a single track i did not enjoy uh there was a lot of real 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 like i know sabbath is heavy like that's kind of what they are They're, they are like the progenitors of heavy metal but this this stuff was really really heavy like heavier than i would have expected it he heavier than the stuff they did as sabbath in the 80s and even in the 90s some of the stuff in dehumanizer is super super heavy and i love that about it that's why it's my favorite one of the their three studios but yeah this th th this one gave all three of them a run for their money in terms of heaviness in terms of just raw power uh, i really liked the mix as well you know uh we were talking a little bit about that uh in in the in the sabbath episode on the podcast you know we're like ah oh, the drum sounds on this one are kind of crappy and this one is great but it hasn't aged or whatever like but this one like that was one thing that caught me consistently is like there's like a really nice blend between the guitars and bass and everything is yeah. rock solid the drums really pop out and dio's vocals you would never think that he was having any sort of health issues at all he has like the same exact range he had 30 years prior um same kind of lyrical content and you know for me like as a dio fan like i can never get tired of it it's just more of what makes him great and it's more of what i love about him and i loved every minute of it and it's definitely one of those albums i plan to revisit again and again and again hoping i can pick up some new stuff with it each time um great catchy hooks awesome melodies great slow stuff great fast stuff the song fear was really really interesting i'd say my favorite was probably follow the tears mm -hmm. um that was awesome. the one yeah like adam and evil grabbed me of like oh i i, I really have high expectations follow the tears was the you know like all right, now that bar is raised even higher, and I absolutely love this album. It quickly made it one of my favorites of all time. I absolutely adored the entire entire thing. Uh, I, I would I would just probably say the same same exact thing as you just did. <laughs> it's crushingly heavy. It's slow. You could really call it a doom album. It is Black Sabbath. Very doomy. Doom I album. No, I love that a lot. I think the the only song that's like kind of fast is um. Uh, uh eating the cannibals yeah that one's pretty fast yeah that, Even that's some about of slower songs um have fast moments in them so th th there's yeah. a good variety you know it, it never gets like too sluggish like it's dragging on it never it never stoops to that no but i, I think that's because it's you know it's it's iomi 
I mean, he could play this doomy, sluggish, real slow riff, but he could just make it interesting. And that's it's what they do, man. Yeah. Fall of Tears, yeah. I have to say, though, that is probably my favorite on, on that album. Bible Black's great. Double the Pain. Yep. Um, everything. In, uh, I'll do a little nitpick. Tiny little nitpick. I kind of wish <clears throat> the album didn't start like it does. It starts kind of slow and kind of... But it's still a good song, uh, Adam and Evil. Yeah, I thought it was a great opener. Yeah. To me, I wish it, like, it, it, like, it punches you in the face, but it, like, it hits you real slow. Like, it's like, oh, it's rushing you. <laughs> you know, it's not like, bam! It's not like Neon Knights, you know? It's not like yeah, Turn true. of the Night. It's not like, like Heaven and Hell just comes in. This is just kind of like a slow kind of crushing. Uh, that it's, it's great, though. It, it's a great album, and I'm glad that See, when, it, when, it, when I first heard about th- them going back into the studio to record new original stuff, I was worried they weren't going to do anything that great. But this album was really good. And, and this is really the first time I've listened to it in years was when um, I figured you haven't heard it, so you might as well. And I can listen to it again, too. You know, so great album. I give it two thumbs up. I definitely think you like Dio, you like Dio era Sabbath. If you weren't, some people aren't even aware this album exists. Listen to it. It's, it's, I wasn't. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, I had no me. idea. I was like, what's yeah. this? Oh, wait, is this, it's just Sabbath? Oh, oh, shoot. All right. Let, let's check it yeah. out. And it's everybody that made, you know, those, those albums great. You know, it's, it's, it's Iomi, it's Dio, it's, it's Geezer Butler, and it's Vinnie Apathy. It's, it's the Dio era Sabbath, and it's, it's fantastic. Uh, and, Again, it was Dio's final studio appearance prior to his death on May 16th, uh, 2010. So yeah, a perfect swan song for his career, at least this pocket of his career, as yeah. we mentioned in our previous episode. Yeah, and it's like I, I just it's a doom metal album. You like doom metal, man. You like any kind of stoner rock or drone kind of stuff. They do all that stuff and they do it well. It's 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 great. It's I love it. I I'm I'm mad at myself for not giving it more listens, you know, because I, I I bought it when it was new. I listened to it a few times and it just I kind of didn't really go back to it for a while. And, and now I'm, I'm going to because I I was just listening to it this morning again. And I'm like, yeah, this is really damn good. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's great. So next on the list is Camelot Silverthorn. I'm a big Camelot fan, but. I kind of fell off the Camelot bandwagon when their singer Roy Khan left and uh, they got another guy who sounds just like Roy Khan. So Silverthorn is a 10th studio album by Camelot. Uh, it was released in 2012. Now, let me just, let me just say this first before we go any further. Last week, uh, we did another Camelot album. We did uh, The Shadow Theory. Mm-hmm. And we all were kind of like it's kind of generic, it's kind of meh, you know. I was I liked it, I think, more than you did. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was their strongest. Well, I don't think it was their strongest at all. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let me just say I should have listened to Silverthorn first before I listened to Shadow Theory, because um this album shares a lot with Shadow Theory, or I should say Shadow Theory shares a lot with this album. Uh because it's almost like there's the same type of songs. It's the same kind of structure, almost. There's certain things they're doing in each song that I heard done in, in Shadow Theory, but here they do it better, okay? That's my first reaction was like, you know, because I'm listening to them backwards. The Shadow Theory came out in 2018. This came out first. So it's the first album to feature Tommy uh, Karavec as a lead singer. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his, his last name right, so I'm just gonna call him Tommy. We'll call him. Oh, is that okay? We call him Tommy. That yeah, that works. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce it either. Maybe Karevic. I don't Karevic. know. Karevic. I'm Someone probably let us we're know. Probably, we're <laughs> both butchering it. Pronunciation in the comments. <laughs> yeah, maybe he'll call me up and be like, "Please, just call me Tommy." <laughs> uh, I think I think that the album's cool. Uh, it's a concept album, which I I found out. Uh, there's a story that goes through the whole album about a little girl named Jolie 
who dies tragically, uh, her death witnessed by her brothers. And the story detail, it, it deals on uh, how like the girl's family handles this. Um, and the whole thing leads to like cover-ups and secrets, betrayals and stuff. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, but what you can expect from Silverthorne basically is the same old Camelot recipe that I love. Okay, they, they do it really well here. The style has not changed much from the older albums. Uh, there's this nice balance between like melodic power metal and the symphonic power metal with great vocals, great guitar solos, great instrumentation. The keyboard player is fantastic. Uh, so is the guitar player, the drummers, every, the, the whole band. They're just... Yeah, that's solid but, across the board. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the highlights, I think, Silver Silverthorn, great song. Um, Solitaire, Torn, Ashes to Ashes. Even the slow ballad, which usually bores me, uh, song from Jolie. Mm -hmm. I like that. That was really yeah, nice. Really um, pretty. I like that one too. Again, the singer does his best Roy Khan impersonation. Uh, like you've told me this before, you didn't even know it was a new singer. Yeah, because <laughs> for me, Silverthorne was my first Camelot album that I got into. I listened to it a lot, and then you know, several weeks back, you assigned to me what was it, Karma. And yeah. I thought it was the same singer, you know, because they sound so much alike. And I really liked Karma. I really liked Silverthorn. So yeah. I was surprised to find out that I would, it was actually two different people. Yeah. So um, so you gave this another listen to this week, right? I did. Um, yeah, because we were talking about Camelot last week. And, you know, and, and that was part of what triggered it. Because I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't realize that like the last three albums have this new singer. And, oh, yeah, it's been a while since I listened to Silverthorn. And Jeff hasn't heard it. So let me give it to him. And I haven't listened to it in years. So let me revisit it, especially after, you know, a uh, couple of weeks ago we did our power metal episode and um you know any, any anyone who watched that you know you, you you could hear me sing praises for rhapsody of fire throughout that whole episode because they're my favorite power metal band of all time but i would say my favorite power metal song of all time has to go to sacrimony on this album by camelot that that song i don't know it just hits oh me. that's a great song too yeah it I, just hits I, me I, on I, so I, many angels levels angels afterwards, yeah 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 i totally the, forgot about that one yeah and, and, and the guest singer Beautiful, beautiful voice. Uh, the 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 way that both both choruses come together between you know Tommy and the guest. Um, the the usage of yeah, the the usage He's from the band um, Amarath. Yeah. Oh, very. They're, cool. they're good too. They're pretty cool. I, I would check them out if you like female fronted kind of Nightwish type uh, stuff. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. Good. It's good I mean, stuff. The higher no, range, the better. So, so having a female singer is an even better an idea, especially in a power metal context, than even a, even like the you know these counter tenor kind of guys that do these real big high melodies. But I love it. I love the melody in that chorus. I love mm -hmm. the, the overall. Like like we said before, you know, just how solid that the sound is for every aspect of the band: the guitars, the bass, the drums, the keyboards. It's very very symphonic it's very colorful um and i of course you know i don't really read into the albums too much i take all the music in at face value when i listen to music so um not even being aware that it's a concept album i just love this whole album from cover to cover start to finish there's not really a song i don't like on it uh, and all the ones that you mentioned that you really liked you know between solitaire the title track ashes to ashes like there yeah, there there's a lot of variety there's a lot of variety of tempo, variety of key. I like that. It's very colorful. Um, it's it's heavy at times, but sometimes it can be very, very light. And when it's light, it's beautiful. And I love the orchestral music, you know, nice little uh, cello bits and like continuum and stuff like that. Um, I, I mean, and even just the brief little intro track, the, uh, the Manu's Day, uh, I really, really like too. It's like a perfect tone setter for the whole yeah. thing. And it just blows right into Sacrimony. And it's... What a way to open an album. Album, it seems like they, they repeated on their latest album, but not as well. Like, that's the whole thing that, like, yeah. so, it like, didn't like, bother they, they me. They tried to replicate it, but failed. I that's probably that. why, yeah, it's probably why, like, I read a lot of these um, reviews of their uh, latest album, the, the Shadow Theory, and a lot of these reviews were saying the same thing that, that we thought. You know, oh, it's just it's just not there, and a lot of people start were pointing back to Silverthorn. Silverthorn. <laughs> yeah, and so that was another thing. Like you know, you 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 know, you telling me like you know, okay, your assignment this week is Silverthorn. After I listened to it a few times, you know, I I started reading some you know some stuff reading into it, and like I said, people are like, well, they're just repeating what they did before, and they did it a lot better, and then I'm like. They're right. <laughs> Silverthorn is a hell of a lot better than this, than the newest one that they did, and even down to like this the 
the song Ashes to Ashes is very similar to the third track on uh, The Shadow Theory. I can't remember the name of it because I don't really care. But the song, <laughs> the, the verses, not, uh, just like how the, the guitar drops out and the bass is just kind of riding it and stuff to kind of holding the song together. They do that in the third track on this album. They do it in the third track on the other album. So what I'm definitely going to do is I'm going to check out their other album they did with Tommy, um, <laughs> which I believe is called Haven. Uh, that was from 2015. I'll have to check that out too to see where that kind of falls because Silver Thorn was fantastic. I put it right up there with Karma, Epica, the Black Halo, the ones that I really like by uh, Camelot. Um, I put it right up there. It's it's really good. Uh, again, the singer is doing his best Roy Khan impersonation, which is not a bad thing. If you want to impersonate a singer, might as well impersonate a really really good one. Yeah, especially if you can so, do it well. Yeah, and he does it well. Like, like again, you didn't even know the difference. Uh, as far as like the lyrical content goes, like you you were saying, like, well, I didn't really pay attention. I just enjoy it for the music. You know, I did that the first first listen. The second listen, I was like, well, let me pull up the lyrics and read along with it. And I did, and then I started. I was like, oh wait, there's something going on here. So I, you know, had to do a little deeper dive into you know what's going on in the internet to read about. Like, okay, this is what the story is supposed to be. And then um, going back reading the lyrics, I'm like, okay. Yeah, they're 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 nailing it because a lot of times like their their concepts can get really diluted and 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 kind of crappy and like it's not really there but it's there kind of thing or it just becomes loose you know but this is this was pretty good as far as like telling this story it was it was good and again great it was a, a great album perfect you know for them you know it's not a I'm not gonna say it's a perfect album but it's a great power metal symphonic metal album by camelot so if you like their older stuff this one just there's good. something here for you with this one i would agree 100 percent, absolutely yeah so that's another thumbs up for me so we've got two great albums you guys can listen to two big thumbs remember, way up this week for for our way, yeah way up yeah they were they were they were really really good uh really good albums we had this week so and um i'm glad i got to listen to uh some sabbath heaven and hell sabbath whatever yeah. whatever you want. Dio Sabbath. Yeah, I'm glad I got uh, through that because it, it blew me away. Like I said, I loved it. So, like we always say, when we're ending this, make sure you join the Rock Talk with Doc Rocker Facebook group. We'd like to have more members. Uh, we'd like to hit a thousand members sometime soon. Uh, I believe we have. We're above 600, uh, I think. 600 and some. We have about uh, yeah, 658. And we're there's a lot of discussion going Yay. on there. Yay! Let's get up to a thousand. And subscribe to our YouTube channel because yeah. uh, Pansy friends. Podcast needs subscriptions and subscribers. Yeah. We got 50. Look us up. Pansy Podcast Productions. We got all the Rock Talk content on there. Jeff has a bunch of his other stuff. I got my teacher talk show with my with my close friend and colleague, Russ Downey. We got a lot of content for a lot of people. So tell your friends, show our stuff, help us out. <laughs>